Welcome, Buff fans, to a latest Buff Zone video, and I am so pleased to be joined by a, uh, a soon-to-be Buff, Danny O'Neill, the quarterback recruit for the class of 2024. And uh, Danny, I appreciate you taking some time after practice today to talk to me. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Well, you guys are very busy because uh, Cathedral High School um, in Indianapolis, that's where you're from, um, is in the middle of the playoffs. You guys got a nice playoff victory last week. Uh, you play Lawrence North, I believe, this this Friday, right? Yes, sir. Are you guys ready for that? Yeah, it's going to be a big game. Um, you know, they're right up the street from us. Um, so you know, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, will be in attendance from the area. And, you know, we're playing for hardware, playing for for that sectional trophy this week. So um, definitely a lot on the line and ready to ready to get after it. You've had a lot of success in your career. Um, you know, this is your third year as a starter, but won a state title. You guys were in the final four last year. So you got to keep that streak going, I guess, of, of being in the final four, uh, but you got to get through this one. So um, how excited are you for this one? And just kind of the way uh, the, the team success you guys have enjoyed during your career. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it started off, you know, freshman year. Um, I was a backup on varsity and that, that senior class really kind of set the tone for, uh, for the next few years. And, they were just, you know, we were a dominant football team then, had a bunch of hardworking guys, and, um, you know, it just kind of trickled down from there to the sophomore year, obviously. Um, we had the talent to uh, win state again. Um, and then, you know, last year uh, got bumped up to the highest division. Um, when, you know, we're playing against schools that have two or 3,000 more kids than us. So, you know, it's a challenge every week once the playoffs hit just because, you know, we're playing schools, you know, so much bigger than us. But, you know, we really accept that challenge, and we know that there's a target on our back just because of, you know, who we are. Um, so just working every day and, and trying to play till uh, Thanksgiving. With you, I know even before you committed to Colorado, you had visions of playing Power 5 football and things like that. So with you having goals like that in your life, and you, now you know you're coming to the Power 5, you're going to be in the Big 12 next year, um, how pleased are you that – you've had this opportunity to move up a division and play bigger schools. And maybe, uh, maybe you didn't get the state championship last year, but you get to test yourself more against some of those bigger schools than you would have in a lower division. Yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, uh, we won my freshman and sophomore year. We won in the second highest division, but I mean, everyone knew every week that we were going to win those, those games. Like it was, you know, there was no way we could have lost, but you know, last year we really, made that run and, you know, kind of proved a lot of people wrong, did what has never been done in cathedral history. Um, and that was win a six, a regional. And so to do that makes semi state and, you know, fall short, it definitely, you know, motivated us a little bit, showed us what we need to improve in the off season. And now it's just time to, to show that to the rest of the rest of the state and show that we're ready. And, you know, it's time for, uh, to maybe get two more trophies this year. Yeah. Well, let's go back a little bit. You know, before you became the starter, um, you know, you're a freshman, you're a backup, but when did you start playing quarterback and when did um, it maybe hit you that I'm actually pretty good at this? Yeah, it was uh third grade was my first year playing like real tackle football. And I was a quarterback all the way back then. And, you know, growing up in Indy, my hero was Peyton Manning. Um, you know, that was right around when those are his last few years in Indy uh, right before he moved to Denver. And, uh, you know, just grew up wanting to be like him. Uh, started playing quarterback third grade and really started taking it seriously. Um, once I got into middle school, started getting, you know, training, going to some camps, stuff like that. And then, yeah. you know, high school, I realized that, like, you know, it's time that I make this my life. Um, so I stopped playing all my other sports, um, just focused in on, on just football and, you know, tried to, to make all my dreams uh, become a reality. Was it hard being the backup as a freshman, even though, you know, you know, there's not a lot of freshmen that get to play on varsity, but uh, for you having played your whole life up to that point, was it hard being the backup? Yeah, but uh, I would say I learned a lot, you know, in the moment I thought that, you know, I was probably just as good as a starter. Um, looking back on it, I think he probably, he probably had me at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, just being able to, to learn, uh, from, you know, the varsity coaches and get into the system, know everything. By the time my sophomore year rolled around, I already knew 
you know, every all the ins and outs of the playbook of the plays, I was able to make adjustments and call audibles and all that stuff. And the coach had trust in me, um, you know, to make all those right right decisions and, and to check in and out of plays and things like that. So, you know, to to be able to have that trust from from my coaches is a huge part of you know our our scheme now was, you know, just being able to call something at the line and then have me check us into the perfect play, uh, depending on what I see from the defense. Yeah, and I believe you were a sophomore when you got your first offer from Toledo, right? Uh, yeah, summer going into sophomore year, yes, sir. Yeah, so you're going into sophomore year, and you haven't even started yet. Um, so when you start, when the offers start rolling in, you get that first one, start getting more offers. Uh, what was that like for you just uh, as a recruiting process starts? You're still a young kid at that time, right? I mean, you're, you're still probably, what, 14, right. 15 years old. Yeah, I think I was 15 at the time. Um, you know, I'm – you know, super competitive and everything that I do. So when I was seeing that, you know, some of the guys I know are getting some of these offers and, you know, that just motivated me a little bit more to, to work a little bit harder because I would think that I'm just as good or better than, than all the other guys out there. So to be able to, to see that, you know, someone else is getting recognized for their hard work, this made me want to work even harder. Um, so, you know, that those, the last two years, uh, when, recruitment was really rolling for me um it was definitely a a fun time but towards the end it got you know a little stressful uh trying to make up my decision but uh definitely glad with how everything played out yeah so as it plays out um Colorado comes after you when did you first start hearing from University of Colorado um it was right after coach Lou took the job um you know it was probably a week or two after um he took the, the OC job. He reached out, and um, I hadn't known him from when he was at Kent State at all, but we just started talking and calling, and, you know, I realized that he's a he's a really good person um, outside of football, which was, was something that was huge for me and my family to, to see. Um, and then, obviously, you know, hearing from Coach Prime and getting recruited from him was, you know, a very uh, unique and special opportunity uh, that I'm thankful for. So. And you can't beat Boulder, can't beat Colorado. Um, you know, I, I believe in the vision. Uh, and, you know, I'm just ready to go out there in January and, and start to work. So as you're talking to them, you know, Coach Lou and Coach Prime, um, and you're kind of like everybody else, you're probably seeing this program from afar because you're watching it on YouTube like all of us, right? Uh, are you right. kind of watching it, like trying to figure out, is this where I want to go? And, like, how much did the YouTube stuff maybe help you uh, make your decision or did you really base it on the relationships you're building, you know, with Lou um, and, and coach prime? Um, yeah, I definitely watch all the YouTube videos and catching up on everything, but a lot of the times I know what's going on, going on before the YouTube video even comes out just because yeah. of uh, my relationship with not only coach Lou, but you know, coach box, uh, coach CP, um, all those guys um, just being able to talk to them and, you know, they're, keep me up to date on everything that's going on out there. Um, so really a lot of that, that stuff, you know, is crazy enough is kind of, um, you know, it's definitely a, a fun thing to that, you know, I mean, there's a whole uh, Amazon prime series coming out of, about the whole team. So, right. And then just being out there as many times as I was uh, during the recruitment process, I think I ended up going out there, twice before committing and then uh, another two or three times after. So just being out there, I uh, feel like I definitely made the right choice and definitely am glad that I can surround myself with the the coaches and the people that are out there. Have you been to a game this season? Yes. I was at the, uh, the Colorado state game. Okay. That's quite a game to go to. Well, yeah, what did what, you think of the atmosphere? And obviously they, they were projected to win that, you know, going away and didn't but it was an awesome win for them against a rival what'd you think of the atmosphere and everything else there uh the atmosphere really blew me away um you know the the stadium only sits you know 55 60 65 thousand but i mean i've been to all the all the big 10 game days seen all the huge stadiums all the sec you know the atmosphere was just like an sec or a top big 10 atmosphere you know, the, the, the student section was being rowdy, um, you know, rivalry. Uh, um, it was a rivalry game, so everyone was really dialed in. Um, obviously, 
Colorado probably didn't perform as well as they could have. Um, had a, a few, uh, you know, miscues on offense, and um, the defense probably wanted a few few plays back. Um, yeah. But, you know, they came out with the win, and, you know, that's really all that matters. Yeah, and, and nice to be there for an exciting win, you know, uh, you know, thrilling win like that. So uh, as you come yes, in sir. 2024, um, you'll be a true freshman next year. Um, I would probably say most likely Shadour is going to still be here um, next year. And so you'll probably have an opportunity to learn from Shador Sanders. How excited are you for that? And, you know, you'll have to sit again, you know, it's the first time since your freshman year of high school, but as long as he's here, you're probably going to be sitting with other, along with other quarterbacks, but are you excited about learning from Shador? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm really just going to, you know, attack every day and, uh, you know, try and be the best me that I can be. You know, try and learn from him as much as I can. Being a guy that he's already started two whole seasons as a as a, a college football starter, one at Jackson and one you know here at Colorado now. So just trying to pick up everything that that he's trying to you know help get coached on, hear from him, and you know hopefully he can you know then relay that. And you know, obviously, if I could play, you know that'd be the the. Right dream right. case scenario for me but with how it played out last time being able to come in learn the system you know develop my body and do all that over again with uh you know full-time you know strength and conditioning staff um college level you know stuff and just being able to come in and soak up as much as I can and then by the time my sophomore year rolls around be ready to compete for that starting spot and so, you know know the offense all that stuff and have it have it down like the back of my hand yeah so have you uh chatted much with Shador or with uh, uh Ryan Staub Case and Wiseman those guys yeah I got a, a good relationship with all those guys um uh you know Shador is uh he, he got a lot of media attention and, and rightfully so I mean he's balling this year um but really he's a he's one of the coolest dudes that uh I've come across in the recruiting process and Obviously, Kaysen and and Ryan are are two other uh, really cool dudes that I've enjoyed getting to know and and talk to a little bit. So, just being able to come in and I know that it's definitely a, a healthy environment in the quarterback room, which you which you want. Yeah. And you know, I'm ready to go to work with those guys. It's part of you though watching Colorado and saying, "Man, I hope they get that offensive line figured out because I don't know how you know." You know, Shadour's taking a beating like that. I mean, that, that's been a lot of talk around here, especially after that last week that um, he's tough as nails, man. I mean, uh, taking a beating like he does. But are you impressed by him kind of keep getting up and keep fighting? Absolutely. That's the that's the hardest thing to do as a quarterback is, you know, you keep getting hit, keep getting guys in your face and mm -hmm. being able to stand in the pocket and deliver passes again and again while getting hit. That's, you know, that's the hard, hardest thing to do in a quarterback. So, you know, ultimate respect to Shador for, for the way he's been able to do that all season. And, um, you know, for for the O-line play, I mean, they're only going to get better from here. Yeah. So that's my thought. And they're only going to get, you know, more recruits and, and more guys in there. And, you know, this time next year, I doubt this isn't is a problem. So Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to put you on the spot that way. But um, certainly it was more about that. I imagine quarterback to quarterback, there's so much respect. Um, for him taking a, you know, the hits that he does and still get up. Now for you, you know, your game has been different this year. Just looking at the stats. I mean, you're more of a running threat than you've ever been. And you, you would run a little bit, actually ran a lot of attempts, kind of fewer attempts this year, but more, way more yards. So mm -hmm. where did the running aspect come from this year? Like, what did you do to kind of develop that part of your game? Uh, honestly, it was uh, really my old line and kind of stepped up this year. Um, a lot of, times like in high school you get a sack as a as a rushing attempt so you know I got a lot of negative yards before but this year I haven't been sacked nearly as much been able to you know use my legs and all off season I knew that you know we had a bunch of dudes last year at receiver and at tight end and this year we got some young guys but we have an established line and a really good running back so we knew that you know as a whole our offense was going to look a little bit different and we knew that we were going to have to run the ball a little bit more than in years past. So, you know, I kind of took that head on and, you know, being able to do all these read option plays and, and quarterback, you know, runs uh, in the open field to try and 
help out uh, our running back and to, you know, help out our passing game as a whole. It's definitely something that I, uh, you know, kind of challenged myself to do and, and it's paying off. I mean, statistically, I mean, you're very much a Sean Lewis type quarterback. I mean, uh, he's, he's always had that running quarterback, whether it's Colin Schley now uh, at uh, you know, UCLA or I think his quarterback before was Crum. I can't remember his first name, but um, did as, have you talked to him about that? Like, he's always liked that running quarterback. And I mean, a couple of years ago, his quarterback was their leading rusher at Kent state. So he's always liked that. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, I mean, he kind of knew back when, when, you know, he first started recruiting me that I was a little bit more of a dual threat. And um, I remember he would always just call, kept, he kept calling me like sneaky athletic and, you know, he, they, he definitely likes his guys to be able to take off and run and, use the read option game a little bit. So, um, you know, to get his guys in the space and definitely would uh, – he tells me that he, he runs his quarterback to get a touchdown, get a first down, and then to get down. So, like, that's his big thing. And um, just get a few yards uh, for for him to be able to call more plays, open up the offense, stuff like that. So, being able to, uh, to run is a big thing in his offense. And – definitely uh seeing it the more that i'm seeing and learning his offense um it's definitely something that's gonna that's gonna help it, uh the program and when i'm out on the field yeah a couple more things for you you know you were obviously got to participate in the elite 11 uh this past summer what was that experience like for you and, and what do you think you took from that experience yeah it's uh it didn't go the way i wanted um got really sick before i headed out there but i wasn't gonna you know, not go. It has been a dream of mine to, to participate in that um, since I was a little kid. So, but being out there, being able to to throw it with, you know, 19 of the other best guys in the country, it was, uh, you know, a dream come true. And I was definitely uh, glad that I that I stuck with it and, and pushed myself uh, to get out there. And, you know, there were, you know, the last two days, there were four or five different competitions, you know, accuracy things, seven on seven. Um, all these different different pro day type things and uh, finished top six and and all of them so um, you know it was definitely a, a blessing to be able to go out there and and prove that you know I, I think I believe that I'm one of the top 20 guys in the country um, yeah just from my performance out there you know with everything that had, that happened right before before the camp so have other schools left you alone since you committed to Colorado uh, for the most part yeah yeah I'll hear every now and then from someone, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, just a little quick conversation and for the most part, you know, and everyone else already basically has their guy. Um, yeah. most schools are only taking one, um, and most schools already have their guy. So a lot of, uh, quarterback recruitment is, is quiet down right now. Yeah. So as we're doing this, this is the day before Halloween. And so it's almost November which means December's right around the corner, which is uh, corner, which is signing day. Now you're wearing buff gear right there. So you're almost officially a buff. Um, how excited are you for that day? And, and just to finally, you know, put your name on that, uh, on that piece of paper and, and, and send it in and say, all right, I'm officially a Colorado Buffalo. Absolutely. You know, playing college football is something that I've dreamed of since I was a little kid. So that'll be the first, you know, real step to, to making that happen. Um, and, you know, making that a reality. And then, you know, really less than a month after signing day is you no know, move-in day. So yeah, it's got a quick turnaround and be out there pretty soon. Well, before you do that, you got to go win a state title. So, um, you know, you got uh, Lawrence North, right? <laughs> That's yeah, what it is this week. So you got to get, get through them first. So uh, good luck to you in the playoffs, Danny. I really appreciate your time and uh, look forward to seeing you in Boulder here pretty soon. Yes, sir. Thank you.